uh, Dyke Levy Project Part 1. Um, I'm showing you right behind the Catholic School where they have it built over here. The Catholic School's there. Uh, I'm going to pause it for a second. Now I'm over here on the opposite side uh, near 4th Street and Water West Water Street. This is where the ramp to go up there. Up to up to the top of the dike levee where you guys can walk for uh, I think about three mile, maybe four mile walk. And there's uh, benches right in this area, so you can sit down here. But right now the grass needs mowed. But uh, I'm gonna go up over to the dike levee and here on West Water Street. I haven't got up on the dike levee yet. I just wanted to show show you which way the dike levee goes. Sorry about the mist, it's kind of cloudy day. All right, I'm gonna show this over again because the car was on the road. This goes towards the university. Up there's the university up that way. All right, I'm gonna pause for a few seconds. Here on the walkway, right behind, the, off to the uh, left of the Catholic school in Lock Haven here. I'm gonna walk up there. The reason why I'm doing this for you guys, because there's a lot of history on this dike levee. I'm not. Uh, I think it was. I think it was finished in the year 2000 or 2001, but I'm not really. I was. I Me, mean, I'm gonna leave you know. I wasn't really fond of them putting this in. It was supposed to keep the high school in when they were building it, but that wasn't. That didn't happen. But. There's a couple things up here. I'm gonna give you a little bit of history of some stuff along the river. So I'm gonna try to get as much in today as possible. And over there is that park I filmed them memorials on the benches, uh, Upper Lockport Park over there which was toward that which had a lot more houses there. it was had a lot of houses there and had a lot more houses over there and uh, and a lot more trees too but people now have river lots over there along that river the whole way you, the city rents them out and you can see what it looks like before I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the one thing until I get down the one area because I already filmed it once, but I'll tell you I'll film it again. All right, this is what the dike look, the dike levee looks like up on top. So yeah, you look look at the river. All right, this is about the lumbering years boom. Lumbering year, Boom Island. The Battle of our, our Boom Island. Lumber was the biggest industry in the early days of Clinton County. Lock came was granted permission to use river for the lumbering in 1859, but for economic reasons, the city of Williamsport went to court, and the result, Lock came was only allowed to use only half the river. The south side. The line in the sand divide, dividing this river was Boom Island, which you can see from the vantage point, from this vantage point, which is over there, Boom Island. I filmed it once before. Attorney Samuel R. Peel and Seymour Durrell Ball went to battle to court to have the dividing line erased. Their efforts lasted 20 years and eventually ended in victory for Lock Haven in 1879 toward the end of lumbering era and they were granted permission to use the entire river. Log boom, here's what the log booms look like and this is what the river looks like now over there. I'm going to pause this for a few seconds and I'm going to read a few more. All right, um, this is uh, the picture right there is some of the lumber lumberjackers that used to be in this area that they, they took pictures of back back in the 1800s, 
lumbering was an obvious economic choice in Lock Haven, which was surrounded by miles of forest. When it was founded, many lumbering companies sprung up, and the West Branch Boom Company was prominent. The West Branch Boom Company was chartered in 1849, and Lock Haven's first mayor, Le Levi Mackey, was very active in it. Property values grew due to the lumbering business and co community expanded. And here are some of the tools. Right there's a bark pillar. That's a bark pillar. And right there's a log stamp hammer. And right there's a D5 part of the the document above with various symbols. This is a list of what's called jobber jobber stamps. They were used to mark the logs as belonging to a certain company. Logs were typical lashed together in a raft to transport down river. Hammer stamps were used to mark the log to indicate ownership. And right there is what they were look the right behind the lumber sleigh in Lock Haven. Lumber on the sleigh in Lock Haven there. Right behind it, if, if you can see, there's a, it looks like a wrap, but there, what, that, that's the lumber, or all these logs and stuff for the booming. It was part of the, part of the river, and then you can see the old, old covered bridge right be, right, uh, right below there. Right there's the old covered bridge, the great lumber jam in 1874, right next to the old covered bridge. And up here, I just showed you, was the lumber mill near Lock Haven. But here's a here's what the I'm going back over here, so I have a tiny bit more to read. Log booms are ma man-made structures created from timber and stone, used for directing the sorting the logs for various lumbering companies in the Susquehanna at Lock Haven. The piers were 40 by 60 foot feet at the base tapering to 16 by 20 feet at the top. They were all placed about 150 feet apart. And this was one of two log booms that was ever put in the West Branch of the Susquehanna. The second one was in Williamsport. Yeah, it wasn't for, it wasn't for Clinton County. Williamsport wouldn't have been the millionaires down there. So, all right, I'm gonna pause this and take a walk up to the other end of I'm not to the other end yet, but I want to show you how steep the uh, bank is. It's pretty steep to climb up. And that's where I climbed, walked up the ramp at from up here, from up here on, dike, on the dike levee. I also want to show you what this looks like on the other side. All these stones. And I'm sorry about the beginning of the video. I had to had it. Uh, I don't know how it happened, but I had it pulled out where it got small, a little bit instead of the whole thing like that is boom, boom island again all right i'm gonna get up uh, i'm still up on top of the dike levee i'm up here near the university i'm showing you they had the miles marked this is the one fourth mile from up there at the end up there is where you get on and there's there's these stripes telling you how many miles how many miles you, you, you're on and this one if you go the opposite way it's two miles from the beginning of the walkway one is so there's two and one fourth miles is how long this uh dike levy walkway up on top goes but the dike levy goes much further than that much further than two and one fourth miles it's just that you know only the walkway goes that um, I'm just going to take a small break here and get up to the other end, but I'm going I'm up at the university end of the, of the, uh, dike levee. Um, that's what I was trying to sell you. I just, I went, went and got my car so I didn't have to walk that distance. Uh, I already walked a long distance as it is. Right here's the parking lot at the, up at the upper end. And... I'm going to go over here and show you the sign. And hopefully I can get this part in. City of, of Lock-In West Water Street parking lot. Metered public pu parking Monday through Saturday, 24 hours enforced. Uh, 
just the city hasn't been keeping up on on the uh, grass right now because of all the rain we've been having but I'm just going to show you this part right up here of the walkway to go up to go up to the start the beginning of the walk uh, see right now the beginning of the walkway to go up Here's the starting line from this side. It's a two and one fourth miles, even though the lines are pretty well uh, bare. But this is going up that ramp I just showed you. All right, I'll be up on top next. This area right here is like a small park by your park by the parking spaces. You can sit in if if there was no grass and stuff bug that could be bugging you right now, but. Alright, I'm almost at the top. Over here is the end of the of the walkway. It comes out like a small cauldron sack right at the end up here. But there's some history right up on top of the hill. I'll leave you know a few history before a little bit more history. I'll throw the Lock Haven University history in. All right, see so this Lock Haven University. Lock Haven University was founded in 1870 as a Central State Normal School. Two year vocational program for the training and certification of elementary and middle school teachers for the public schools of Pennsylvania was Lock Haven Teacher College. The word teachers was dropped in 1960 when the school's curriculum was expanded to include degrees, programs in the liberal arts and sciences. Enrollment between 1960 and 1980 rose from 1,000 to 2,500 students. In 1983, Lock Haven State University uh, College was named the Lock Haven Univers University. Since then, the university enrollment has grown to 4,700 courses of study. Now include a wide variety of bachelor's degrees in liberal arts and science, as well as master's degrees and professional programs. A native of Lancaster. Albert N. Robb, the picture seen there, 1840 to 1904, was superintendent of the Lock Haven Public School System. He is considered the primary founder of the Central State Normal School, now Lock Haven University, and he serves as the school's first principal in 1870 through 1884. In 1964, Robb Hall was named in his honor. And here's a picture of the old school when it was the original normal school, 1885, stood one hill near the present site at North Hall. The build building was destroyed by fire in 1888. Uh, where the, the bell used to be, the old George uh, George Hall, I think that was. Bikers on Fairview, no, that's model school, 1916. All right, bikers on F North Fairview Street, 1897. Drawing class in, 18, in, in the Glen, 1918, at some picture. Sleigh ride 1913, and the photos of the courtesy of Lockheed University information panel sponsored by the LHU Library. And this is the whole. This is the whole. If you want to come up, come and look at the pictures and stuff, you, they have these the whole way through the whole way through the Dyke Levee system. I already showed you one, and I'm gonna go up to the colder sack and tell you a quick story up there. Uh, I'm gonna. Do the project project number two right about now.